It's great that so many of you have been leaving questions on Instagram or below on YouTube videos. And the question that we have today is from Nick Thomas from NT Creations who asks, how do you get networking right? I'm gonna start off by confessing that I find networking very difficult. I find it a little bit unnatural. Um, I think I'm a little bit of an introvert, which means that despite what you may read, despite what you may see inside, I'm a little bit shy. And you may feel exactly the same. In fact, I think if I asked you through the camera to respond now, and I asked you, do you feel that networking is easy? You may say, many of you that know it's quite difficult, but you know it's absolutely necessary. Um, our success is often based on the people that we know. Um, and the contacts that we have. Often we may say in business, it is about who you know. So you know, <laughs> there's a lot of no's, you know that you need to know more people. So how do you make that happen and how do you do it in a way that makes you feel comfortable? I think you can throw away this misconception that business networking is always about walking into a room full of people who have got a drink in their hand and, and you, everyone's chatting and you make an entrance and all of a sudden the room goes quiet. So they say, who are you? Uh, really, a lot of networking should be long term and it is about that one-on-one -on -one or one-to-one -one relationship. If you do happen to go to a networking event with lots of people who want to meet one another, avoid treating it like speed dating, where you're going to walk up to someone and you're going to give them a two or three minute elevator pitch, which talks about what you do, and then hand over a business card and, and walk away. The elevator pitch, as they call it, is useful, but really what you're looking for is to build one-on-one -on -one relationships that matter, which means if you walk into these type of environments, Aim to talk to a few people, but really aim to create a genuine connection that's not just about what you can do for them, or, or sorry, not just about what they can do for you, what they can purchase of you, but what you can do for them. And don't always make it about the monetary exchange, money for services. Really, the aim is to develop a, a friendship um, and develop a relationship. Now, I used a phrase earlier, which is, an elevator pitch, and you may ask, what's an elevator pitch? Well, the phrase and term really comes from walking into an elevator, you're on the ground floor, you go up to the tenth floor, and in the time it takes you to move from the ground floor to the tenth floor, you see someone next to you, and you go, hey, my name's Simeon, and off you go into a very short 30 to 60 second pitch of exactly what you do, and by the time ding, the doors open on the 10th floor, the business card should have been exchanged and you should be waving and there should be a new lovely relationship created. It is good to make sure that you do have in your mind exactly what you have to offer crystallized and formed in a very short, concise manner. You should be able to explain what you do as a filmmaker, as an artist, as a creative. Um, so if I was a photographer, I wouldn't just go in and say, um, I'm a photographer and I shoot photographs of families. It's not what I do. But I wouldn't do that. Look, my aim would be, I'm thinking on the spur of the moment now without giving it much thought, I would probably want to say something like, um, I capture families shouldn't have chosen that one because now Emily's looking at me going, so what's she going to say? What's she going to say? Uh, <laughs> Team Ravida's Emily also shoots uh, family portraits at the same time. Emily, what do you say to people when you meet them? Um, I'll repeat it. Okay, let me try and repeat that. My name's Emily, and, and I um, specialise in family photography um, and really creating imagery that shows the connection between family members. Is that okay? <laughs> kind of acceptable, she says. And it is better than being the person with the camera. For me as a filmmaker, uh, and, and when we're all working together and we're talking about what we do, I call myself a storyteller. Um, I'm a storyteller that I'm a visual storyteller that focuses on telling stories for businesses. We aim to 
move an audience to act or to feel something. And we do that in an engaging way. Um, and we have a number of other ways that when we meet someone, we're able very quickly to explain what we do. And we try and aim to describe what we do in a different way to another filmmaker that may be standing just next to us. Right? You imagine there's five or six filmmakers in the same room or photographers in the same room. We can't all say the same thing, even though the reality of it is we pick up a camera and we shoot photo or we shoot video. Um, so really work on that message in advance. The reason being is when someone says, hey, how you doing? Um, what do you do? You need to have something in your mind, otherwise you will always be fearful of that situation. But do you know, when you just have a conversation with someone, over time you end up just, you just talk, don't you? Um, it's not just, what do you do? Um, this is what I do, exchange business cards. Your aim is just to find out, and actually your aim with networking is this, find out as much about that person that you're talking to as possible. Find out um, what they do, find out what challenges that they face, um, find out um, what, things that they, what things they enjoy. The more you find out, about, find out about them as possible through conversation, through listening actually is the key thing. Your aim when you walk into a room is to do as much listening as possible, not as much talking as possible. If you spend all of your time in a room talking, you will not learn anything. You have to aim to spend your time listening, which means that you need to actually work more on your questions to draw people out, to find out what problems that they have. So that when you find out what problems they have, you then in your mind know how what you do will solve that problem. Ah, and then we start to have a meaningful relationship. When it comes to networking, don't always look for formal networking events. Networking happens, should happen every day all around you. Um, it might be, in fact, I'll give you an example. I travel from our office in central London, um, way out of London, I do an hour's journey every day. Behind me, there was a conversation about filmmaking. And someone at the side of me heard the conversation and said, hey, I couldn't help but hearing that you're in the filmmaking industry. And I want to get into this field. And I was like, oh, my goodness, awesome. They weren't talking to me, they were talking to the person behind me. Then I stood up and said, I can't believe this, guys. I know we're all on the same train together. This happened actually the day before yesterday. I said, I'm involved in filmmaking as well. And we then started to communicate and we started to chat and to swap details, to compare um, information on camera and kit, etc., etc. And you never know when we might need one another's services. Um, that contact and communication happened because we ha I took the guts and the individual before me had the guts and the nerve to make the approach and go, hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is, and then they said, my name is, and we had a conversation. The train stopped at a station and those three individuals from those two different parties, they got off the train and I then walked back to my seat and I sat down again. There was a young girl sitting, next, uh, sitting opposite me um, and she said, I couldn't help but notice that you were involved in filmmaking. Well, I'm a composer. I've just done two master's degrees in music, and my aim is to create music for video and also for film and TV. And then she started to ask me my viewpoint on the industry. And then I started to talk to her about principles that can help to improve my own music selection. Ultimately, our likelihood from that conversation is that we have a project coming up where I would benefit from what she does and she would benefit from what I do. And it's not gonna be about the monetary exchange. It's gonna be because we both see that there's a, a synergy. The key thing there was she had the guts to approach me and introduce herself. The fear often, the, the key thing with networking and the thing that puts us off is the fear of rejection. That's the thing that often used to get me. I'm gonna walk up to someone like me walking up to a girl and saying, hey, how you doing? And then they're going to go, who, who the heck are you? Go away. That is the worst case scenario. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go up to a girl. I'm, ma I'm married. But in business, right, you, you sometimes, that is the fear. What's going to happen when you introduce yourself? Well, actually, the reality of it is most people are decent human beings and they will respond with 
a synergy and, and, and an equal step. So if you end up taking a step towards them, they take a step towards you. If you put your hand out, then they're going to shake your hand. If you say, my name is Simeon, they're going to say, my name is Jordan. And, and then what do you do? And this is what I do. And it's always mirrored and you end up moving like this. Do not be afraid of the introduction. In fact, I'm trying to set a goal for myself. Maybe you should set the same goal. Every single day, try and say hi to one person that you wouldn't normally talk to. So if you're at the coffee machine and you're in a business center, could you say, hey, my name's such and such. What's your name? Oh, yeah, cool. So, so what do you do? You know, we did this at our office um, because we have um, an office space and we share with lots of other businesses. And over the coffee stirring, um, I did the introduction and I forced myself to do it because if I'm honest with you, like Nick, I was terrified. Um, and particularly because it was a lady, right? But I made the coffee, I had nothing to do. They were making coffee as well. Hey, here's the sugar. And we were like, oh, the sugar, and borrow the spoon. You know, I borrow the spoon. I said, hey, ha so how, how are you doing? You're having a good day? Yes, I'm having a good day. Um, so uh, what do you do? Um, well, I, I work for this company and I'm a marketing man. Mar marketing? Oh. I didn't get too excited at that point. I go, oh, I do video. I waited. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. So what do you do in terms of marketing? Okay, that's great. Oh, so some of the challenges you face. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, what do you do? Oh, we're official storytellers and we specialize in marketing using video. I changed my pitch slightly because I knew the, what the problem she had and I knew what she did and I was aware of what issues she may face. So I steered my conversation in that direction. Do you know what happened? Turned into a nice juicy bit of business and a relationship that's ongoing just because I had the guts to make the contact. What would happen? Now I'm talking to myself, actually. What would happen if I did that every single day? Maybe over the seven days of the week, five working days, one of those would turn into a meaningful relationship. And then over time, they might call on you and you might call on them. That is what you call forming a network. Um, ignore that old fashioned mentality of walking into a room full of people. It's about creating meaningful relationships one on one. Maybe we should work together on that and set that aim and that goal of trying to reach out to, even if it's via email introduction. Um, on Instagram, a number of you have contacted me on Instagram. In fact, we have Nick here. Nick, come on round, all right? Uh, Nick did the networking thing and kept in contact um, and you reached out to me and then because you were constantly keeping in touch and interacting on Instagram Live, and then because when I did a request and I said, I need some help on a day like this when we're going to be testing all the technology that's behind, we've got a move, we've got some cinema lenses, we've got all sorts of things that we need to practice and play with. And then, you need to stand on this side, the light's going to be better. <laughs> and then um, you reached out to me. Yeah. And because I recognized who you were, because you had based things on creating a meaningful relationship first, you were the first person I called on. That's cool, that's how it works, all right? So thank you very much for uh, getting involved here on the YouTube channel. Thanks firstly for watching. Thank you for leaving your messages on Instagram, like Nick, on YouTube, like a number of you. Keep in touch and start to form these usual relationships, uh, even these little interactions that we're having here. This is networking.